For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, man. Today. 
as we're in the building, as we make the sacrifice to come down here on today. God, be in our service on today. Let your anointing flow in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your spirit be in the building even now. Touch your man and servant even now, God. Bless him with a word from on high. Anoint him as never before. And Lord, even in the midst of it all, we're going to give you all the honor and glory because you are good to us. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I feel good down in my inner part of my soul. Glory about beyond my soul. Hallelujah. The innermost parts even on today. Amen. We're going to go to the scripture ever so quickly. Amen. Because I want to hear the word of God even on today. Amen. I have a, a, a desire for it, a longing for it. Hallelujah. The scripture in Psalms 121 says, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee shall not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Verse 5 says, The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Glory be to God. I had only planned to read the first verse, but hallelujah. The Lord wanted me to read a little further. Amen. We're just so glad for another day that God has blessed us. He's been so good. Amen. We're just grateful. God has been blessing and continuously blessing Elmwood. We want to thank you for tuning in. We want to thank you for your support of this ministry. Those, My phone just rang for a cash app just now. Someone came by earlier and dropped off a check. The deacon, he went to pick up Mother Childs, but then he said, let me leave my offering. Such a blessing, even now, those who choose to give to this ministry, you could give to anyone else. We appreciate that you choose to give to Elmwood Memorial. Give to Elmwood Memorial, because we'll do you right, amen. Everything that comes in goes to the upbuilding of this church. Everything that goes in, make sure our bills are paid, and they are paid. Glory be to God. So you can choose to give by cash app. That's Benita Buck 01. Uh, dollar sign Benita Buck 01. Or you can choose to use our Givelify, Elmwood Memorial Church of God in Christ. And you'll see a photo of the church as well as our pastor. Or you can get that 55 cent stamp and mail it to Elmwood Memorial 5048. Dr. Martin Luther King Drive, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. And again, we thank you for all that you continuously do for our services. Amen. We thank you even now. Amen. And we're just grateful to God. And we're grateful because even during the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so many have been dedicated, dedicated to coming on every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for this prayer at sundown. And then on Wednesday with the uh, pr uh, prayer and the, the, the devotional, amen, the devotional and then the prayer on Wednesday nights. We're just grateful to God for so many. And I just have this little praise report. You know, uh, I do my best to try to do my best with everything within the church. But I got so excited just to see, even on our Facebook page, that we've had over 1,400 people come to our Facebook page just this month. We are only the 18th part of the month, but we have over 1,400 people visit our Facebook page, and that's a blessing from on high. That means 1,400 people heard prayer, they heard some singing, they heard some preaching, glory be to God. So I'm grateful to God for number one, receiving that report, but to know that the word of God is getting out. Hallelujah. That makes me so excited to know that somebody took the time to come by and visit Elmwood Memorial. Amen. We have a special announcement that you'll see by video this afternoon. Amen. We're just grateful to God for another day. Amen. I'm going to step aside here and turn it over to the hands of our pastor. And I just want to sing this short little song. Jesus, 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 there's something about that name, oh, Master, Savior, Jesus.
God, we just thank you. We praise you this day. We thank you, dear God, for your name. Oh, because your name is yes, sweet. Your name, oh God. Oh, your name dries up tears. Your name, oh God, brings comfort to us when we are, oh God, in precious or dire situations. Your name brings peace, oh God, when there's confusion. Your name brings peace to us. Jesus, oh, that name, oh God, it heals, oh God, it heals even home today. We thank you for that name. There is no other name that can be called upon whereby man must be saved, but by the name Jesus. So we thank you for that name, Lord. We thank you for giving us permission to call upon your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for deliverance, oh God. Thank you, dear God, for hearing and for answering our prayers. Yes. God, even on today, we call on you even right now. As we stand here, oh God, to share, oh God, the word that you have given unto us. Lord, I pray that your word, oh God, would change, oh God, the mind, would change the life, oh God, of the person that does not know you in the part of their sin. I pray, God, it would encourage that person that may be discouraged, oh God, that just needs a little help, a little assistance, oh God, just to yet make it on through this day. I pray, God, you get your name, oh God, that this word would, oh God, would stretch forth, oh God, and would heal, oh God, that person that may be sick even on today. And God, we're just going to thank you even right now. And we're giving you the praise, Lord, because we know you are worthy of all praise, worthy of all glory and all honor. Just pray, Lord, you just use me as you would see fit, Lord. Anoint me, oh God, to share the word, oh God, to your people. And we'll give you all the praise, the glory, and honor shall be thine. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You might be seated. Amen. We're grateful to God again for another day that he has blessed us and that he has allowed us to be able to see. Amen. As I said, many people, as we know all the time, some people go to bed, amen, at, at the evening time, amen, and may not wake up that next morning. There's no guarantee that just because you go to sleep that you're going to wake up. There's no even guarantee, matter of fact, that even this next second that you're yet going to make it to the next one. Amen. But it's by the grace of God that he allows us to be able to be here. Amen. So we are grateful. Amen. I'm grateful to God that he blesses us to be able to live. Amen. I say we're in the land of the dying, but I'm glad that he keeps us here even now because we're seeing people are dying and leaving here by the thousands, it seems like, on a daily basis. But God is yet keeping us here, and I'm grateful to God on today. And so again, we want to thank you all for, for tuning in on today uh, by way of Facebook. Amen. We thank you for being with us by way of the conference call. We just say, man, we are grateful that you have chosen to worship with us on today. We're gratefully, man, I want to thank you, praise God, for my wife, Missionary Buckner, carrying service homes at this point. Amen. For that wonderful selection. Amen. Jesus, there is something about that name. Amen. I'm grateful to God for her. Glad to see Mother Childs here with us today. God bless you, Mother. Amen. God continues to keep you. Amen. And keeps you with that precious smile on your face. Yes. Amen. Just glad that you are here with us on today. God bless. Amen. With Lucas Brown being with us. Amen. Today. Amen. Sharing with us again with his music ministry. Amen. Certainly helping to carry the service on. Amen. We praise God for him. Amen. As I say, it takes us all to bring it. It takes us all. Amen. Working together. Amen. We just thank and praise God for him on today. And for all of you. Amen. We're going to say today, amen, if you would get your Bible, if you would get your Bible, amen, I want you to turn to the very first book in the Bible, which is the book of Genesis. We're going to go there, the book of Genesis 32. We're going to be reading verses 23 through 30. Amen. Genesis 20, uh, 32, Genesis 32nd chapter, verses 23 through verse number 30. Amen. Glory be to God. Let me just do this here, man. I'm going to make it, man. My wife had alluded to a special announcement, amen. It's going to be posted later on today, amen. But we'll go ahead and share it even now for those who are watching, amen. Just letting you know that, amen, the first Sunday of November, the first Sunday of November, amen, Elmwood Memorial Church of God in Christ, amen, will be in essence reopening. Yes. Amen. We're going to be reopening, amen, the first Sunday of November. That's two weeks from today. Yes. Amen. I'm saying to all of our members, amen, I'm looking, be looking for you to be here with us in service. Amen. I tell you, we're going to shout, we're going to praise God, we're going to give him the glory. Yes. Amen. Because he has allowed us to make it through to this point. 
Amen. I'm letting you know again that, I, amen, we have checked and seen, amen, other, other churches and things are, are, are opening, amen, and so therefore I feel like if they're able to do it, amen, we're able to do it as well. I kind of woke up, you know how they say, they woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stayed on Jesus. And when I woke up, amen, this was on my mind, and the Lord just pressed on me, said, the first Sunday in November, have the saints to come on back to church. Said, oh, my God, praise God. So I started getting things together. Amen. I said, I, I, that's why I said, the Lord, I, I said, all right. So the Lord let me know that you've got two weeks, amen, to get it together, amen, but to let the saints come on back to church. Yes. Amen. The first Sunday of November. Amen. So we're going to be promoting that. We're going to be pushing that. Amen. We want the saints to know, amen, that first Sunday of November, November the 1st, amen, to be on back here, amen, in service, amen, here live at Elmwood 5048, Dr. Martin's Bikini Drive. And I just want to let you know, oh my God, I'm getting excited about it already, but I believe something's going to happen that Sunday. Glory be to God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God today. Y'all better watch out up in here. Amen. I'm telling you, and, and I, I, I feel like I just want to let somebody know, even today, I want you to know, because sometimes, you know, when we make an announcement, sometimes people say, well, is that just for the members? Is that just for the members? No, no, I'm, I'm saying everybody, anybody, whosoever will, let him come. Amen. If you desire to be a part of this service, come on by here. Amen. 12 o'clock noon on November the 1st. Amen. We're going to be here giving God the praise. Amen. And my wife just said, amen, I want y'all to know maybe this is part two of it. Because back in February, she bought the message that said something's going to happen. And when something happened, of course, we know it wasn't short of air that this pandemic hit. And when I began, just was announcing this here, and she spoke out and said something's going to happen. And I feel like that's in the air now. Something is going to happen on that first Sunday. Y'all better watch out in here. And I'm not, I don't know about you, but I'm not looking for a pandemic to come the first Sunday of November. Amen. But I, I'm looking for the power of God to fall really mightily upon his people because there's something that happens when the saints of God get together. As I shared before, mother, some of us we haven't seen, amen, for about eight months. So it'll be good for us to come together and be able to worship together. Amen. So plan, amen, to be here the first Sunday of November. First Sunday of November. That's November the 1st, amen, for our 12 o'clock service. Amen. It's our welcome home service. Amen. Our welcome home service. Service, amen. Glory be to God. Well, let me go on, man. You don't have to wait till then to get your shout on, amen. You can shout before then. Right. Glory be to God, amen. We're going to the book of Genesis, the 32nd chapter, amen. Verses 23 through 30. I'm not going to be, be, be here long, amen. One thing about this pandemic, it has taught me, amen, which I kind of already knew, but maybe re emphasized it, amen. I don't have to preach very long, amen. Psalms, uh, I should say, Genesis 32, 23 says, and he took them. And sent them over the brook, and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face. And my life is preserved. Uh -huh. I want to talk a little bit, amen, from that uh, 25th verse. It says, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. Yeah. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. I'm going to take for our subject today simply hold on and don't let go. Yeah, that's it. Hold on and don't let go. Now, I'm going to tell you, I mean, I, I know, listen, I'm excited about a lot of things. Amen. But when I look back over this year, and if I had to have a theme, as I keep saying, or I should say words that people have been hearing more so, you know, sometimes, you know, when you minister or, or when you, you know, uh, over a certain period of time, 
there's a certain thing that kind of evolves, if you will, as it relates uh, to, if you will, a, a message or to a, a period of time. There, there's a thing that kind of comes up and that kind of evolves. And, you know, sometimes there are certain times, I believe, when the Lord is blessing, if you will, as they say, things are going well and everything of that nature, they'll tell you it's a year of prosperity, it's a year of blessings. And so all you keep hearing is about the blessings of God. And people, and that'll kind of almost be the thing, if you will, of that time frame. Then there's other times you go through and, and you know, you'll be told in this message, you know, to have faith, to keep trusting, keep believing in God. And, you know, that you'll do that because maybe you're going through something. You may not be, amen, as, as, as I should say, as prosperous as sometimes we think it should be. But I look at this time that we're living in now. I look and see, amen, if you will, all the things that have been going on. I'm looking to see all it, and you know, there's so much negative that goes on. It seems like the negative kind of outweighs the positive. And looking at this, amen, it looks like to me that the thing that you will of this year has simply been for, namely for the saints, amen, who, as I said, have not been able to gather together in certain circumstances, have always had to, if you will, to be able to have to stay at home, not been able to get out, not been able to assemble themselves, amen, if you will, in a physical sense. And so, therefore, the theme has always been, I think, for this year has been, amen, someone has been telling the saints to hold on. Hold on. That's all it's been. It's been all ever since March. It's been about holding on. It's been, you know, well, don't let go. You know, I know it's, I know it's rough, but you still got to hold on. I know that, that it looks like that, you know, as I said, even when this thing first kind of started, amen, when, they, when we got to the point where we really weren't even able to gather at all. But it was pretty much everybody was somewhat on lockdown. And mother, you know the story. People began to pass away. People began to, to die. I mean, you know how it was. It was so bad they wouldn't even have funerals. You'd have to go out to the cemetery. And what wasn't, wasn't allowed, even, even when you got to the cemetery, you had to sit in the car and watch as they marched your loved one out there to their final resting place. Wasn't the time to be able even to see the body or anything like that. Amen. All that was going on, and somebody was yet telling you to hold on. They was telling you, oh my God, all of this going on, you know, seeming like day by day. You know, we were praying and we were saying, well, Lord, we see that this is coming. We know the pandemic has hit. And we were sitting, if you will, you know, and doing minding our own business. And we were seeing people begin to, to pass away. And then lo and behold, amen, in some cases, it began to hit within our families. Amen. We began to see all of a sudden that the, the things, amen, instead of as much as we were praying, looked like things were getting worse. And yet and still, amen, somebody was just standing, proclaiming, even myself, standing, proclaiming and telling you yet to hold on. And yet even today, in the midst of everything that's going on, amen, nothing has really stopped, nothing has turned down. If you read, if you read, and if you're a person that follows the news, you'll know that in most of these, most of these states, Amen. This pandemic is yet continuing to go on. Amen. It's not, and, and as much as people want to say it's going to end at this point in time, we're going to have a vaccine at this point in time, this is going to happen, and that's going to happen. It looks like the more that they say things are going to get better, amen, things seeming like are getting worse. Mm -hmm. And here we are, here we are again, preacher telling you today, going to come with a message telling you to hold on. They're going to tell you, amen, not to let go. Why am I going to hold on? Why? What's the point? Of me holding on. Because it looks like with everything going on, if things are getting worse, why should I hold on? Well, we must know, amen, that we are people, amen, we are saints of God, and as saints of God, amen, we don't look, if you will, like the world looks. The world looks at things by what they see, and if we look by what we see, Matter of fact, when they when you're watching, if you look at the news and if you look when they have the United States and they have it on the map and they show you state by state and you look and see, if you will, how the pandemic continues to rise. You see the numbers going up in every state. Amen. If a person were to look at that and see over 215,000 folk have died and you see millions of people, amen, get infested and continue to get infested with the disease. Amen. When you hear of people in the in the ICU unit who are yet, amen, on life support because of this disease, if you looked at all those things, you would say, for the preacher, amen, we're in bad shape. We're in horrible condition. Amen. I will say to you, amen, if you're a person who doesn't know Jesus, I would say if that's all that you've got to look at, yes, it is horrible. But oh my God, when you know about Jesus, oh, yeah. and if you last said with your person that reads
reads the Bible, and I can't, I can't help but go back to what I was told when this thing first broke. Amen. When it first came out and God led me in the New Testament, amen, and he took me to the red letters where Jesus was speaking. And when he was talking about the ending times, and he said that these things would come. But he also said they would pass. They were not going to come here to stay. But if you are a person, amen, who does not know the Lord, amen, if you are a person who is not of faith, that would not have resonated with you. But if you are a person of faith, you would know that even though things look as bad as they do now, even though it looks like it gets worse and worse, I can yet, amen, rest on the word of God that said it's going to pass. It's not going to be here forever. And I just want to say, I know many of you, and I don't mean to get off on too much of the political arena, but I know many people are looking the war and saying, well, maybe if we, if we make a change, if you will, in certain areas of the government, maybe that will help, amen, to bring about a change. Maybe that will help to bring us back in the right direction. But I got news for you. You can change every representative. You can change every governor. You can change every council person. You can change every mayor. You can change the highest office in this land, which is the president of the United States of America. You can make all the change that you want to make. Amen. But I want to let you know that the only thing that's really going to change in this world, amen, is when the people of God decide we're going to get together. And we're going to humble ourselves and we're going to pray. And we're going to turn from our wicked ways. Oh my God. And we can just learn to put God first. I believe that the things will change. You say what you want to say. I know, I know many people don't, don't subscribe, if you will, to the person who is in charge, if you will, even now. And I'm saying the person that I would say who the world would say is in charge. But I got news for you, even with the person that's, that's in charge, even right now. Then we would say that the world would say is in charge. I want you to know that my God yet can change things. Even with that same person that's in charge right now. Because he can only do what God allows him to do. I got news for you is that God is yet in control. And God is yet in charge. And so that's what I can yet tell you, amen, with a strong, amen, affirmative. I can yet stand here strong on my feet. And tell you today that you can yet hold on. Hold on. If God spoke something to you, it will happen. But I got news for you today. Some of these, some of the things that we want, some of the things we've got laid before God. Let me go on and, and just help you out today. Because people have things before God that stretch beyond this pandemic. Some people have been praying for help on their job. Praying for help if you will at home. Praying for, for, for help if you will. In every aspect of their life. Praying for seven relationships. Oh, help me preach somebody. Praying and praying and praying. And look like nothing is yet changing. I'm going to tell you as the subject said of the message today. That you keep holding on and you don't let go. I believe that Jacob was here. Let me get to my text here. And tell you about Jacob. Jacob had a seven relationship. Between him and his brother. You know it all started. If you will, when they were, when they, as I said, they grew up as brothers. And when their daddy passed away, back in those days, they had what was known as a birthright that was given to the firstborn. And so Esau was the firstborn. My God, but, but, but the wife, if you will, of their daddy loved Jacob so much that she said, I know that, the, that Esau is the one to be blessed. You would be blessed. So she went at the time when, when Isaac got sick, went in there with him. And Jacob was a smooth fella. But, 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 but the wife got together and she put some hair on his hands, on his arm. And so he said, Go in there and talk to him. Daddy's blind and daddy can't see. But you go in there and talk to him because he's getting ready to bless Esau. I'm going to send Esau out to the field. He likes being out there. Because he's a wild man anyway. But Jacob, you've been in here. You a smooth man. So I'm going to rough you up a little bit. And have you go in there and talk to daddy. He went in there and talked to Isaac. And when he talked to his daddy, his daddy got ready to bless him. And his daddy said, he began to feel on the arm of old Jacob. And when he felt his arm, he felt the roughness. He felt that put on his arm and he heard Jacob speaking and he said I got news for you he says you feel just like 
Esau. But your voice sounds like Jacob. And Jacob began to lie and said, Oh, I, I am Esau. It is me. And Isaac went on and blessed him. Isaac was upset when he found out that he had blessed the wrong one. But it was all over now. And so now Jacob had the blessing. Years and years had passed. And Jacob goes out. And after a while, Esau. He hears that Esau is on the other side. And Jacob did not know how Esau was going to receive him. So he had, I said he had, a dilemma on his hand because he didn't know if Esau was going to try and kill him for what he had done. So Jacob decided, he said, let me get out of here and let me send Esau some presents. And so he sent Esau, he sent Esau some presents. He got his servants together and said, you get out there and take some animals with you and you take them as a present unto Esau. And when you see Esau there, you tell him that he came from Jacob, his brother. Lord, we be the God. So he goes on out there, and, and they watch ahead with those presents. And Jacob is behind them with his family. Nighttime comes, and Jacob says to his family, you all go on and march on ahead of me. And Jacob stays behind and this is where we find him here at nighttime. And I would say 2020, but this is nighttime. We've been in nighttime. We've been praying and we've been calling on the Lord. And that's what happened with Jacob. Jacob stood over there. He was all by himself. He didn't have anybody with him. He didn't have any possessions with him. It was just Jacob by himself. He got there. Said that at nighttime there was a man that came. That man came down to Jacob and they began to wrestle. They began to walk back and forth all night. And I can hear many of you saying, I can relate to the preacher. I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been wrestling all night long with these conditions. And I'm here to tell you. Just like I just like, I would tell Jacob, and like Jacob would say to you, hold on, just a little while longer, hold on, and don't let go. The Bible said that he wrestled down with that man. Some say he was an angel. He wrestled with him all night long. The Bible said that when he wrestled, he grabbed the hold of the thigh. He had a hold to him. My God, and when he got a hold to him, the thigh of Jacob fell out of charge. Here he is, yet resting, and he's yet dysfunctional now. And some of you have been praying, you've been fasting, you've been going through, and now you're dysfunctional. Your hip has fallen out of charge. Your leg has fallen out of joint, and I'm yet telling you, as hurt as you may be, in pain as you may be, I'm telling you to hang on in there. I'm telling you to yet hold on, hold on, and don't let go. Hold on to it. Hold on to your prayers. Hold on to your faith. Don't let go. God, I said, God will bring you out. This man said, Jacob, we've been wrestling for a long time. Jacob, you got a hold on me, and I can't get out of here. But Jacob, I need you to know something. That daybreak is about to happen, and I've got to get out of here. I can't stay here and wrestle no more. And I heard that man cried out to Jacob, and he said, Jacob, to go. And I heard Jacob said, I know that you got to go. I don't mean to be disrespectful. I know you got to get out of here. But you got to understand that I'm in pain. You got to understand that I won't let you go until you bless me. Because I know that you got the power. I know you got the authority to bless me. Yes, Lord. Jacob, and I hear him say, 
He was saying it was worth the fight. When it was over, it was worth the fight. I know I may be limping now because my joints out of socket, but it was worth the fight. And thank you, Jesus. It was worth the fight. Thank you, Jesus. And I even say right now, I speak to that person even right now. I speak into your life right now. And say to you even now, you may say and feel like while you're wrestling, is it really worth it? But the Lord says when you're delivered, you'll look back and say it was worth the fight. It was worth it. It was worth it. It was worth it. It was worth it. Hallelujah. Bless your name. God, touch right now. Touch right now, God. Give strength, oh God, to your people everywhere. Bless them, oh God, with the strength to get hang on and to hold on in the midst of everything that's going on. Lord, we thank you, God, and we praise you even on today. We praise you for this word. God, I believe we're going to hold on a little longer. I believe we're going to hang on in that. Knowing, dear God, oh my God, knowing that the day is about to break. Knowing that our joy is coming. Knowing that with the day break, joy is right there. So God, we just thank you right now. We praise your holy name. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the victory. Amen, amen. Because we held on. That's the victory. That person today may say, Preacher, I'm like that man who was in the hospital. He was facing death. And in the midst of facing death, someone stared with him and said, Young man, just hold on. And he looked up to that person that was speaking. And he said, I would hold on, but I have nothing to hold on to. Thank you, Jesus. That may be you. You may be saying, preacher, it sounds good. You said, I heard that message, hold on, hold on, but I have nothing to hold on to. Well, I'm going to give you something, someone to hold on to today. Amen. It's not your wife, not your husband, not your mother, your father. Amen. But it's someone that will be here beyond your husband, beyond your wife. We'll be here beyond, amen, your parents, beyond any friends, and that person is Jesus. He was here before you got here. He'll be here after you go. He knows everything about you, and he yet loves you. All you have to do is give him your heart. When you give him your heart, repent of your sins, you'll have someone, you'll have him to hold on to. It's very simple, amen, if you just, if you could just make up in your mind, that yes, brother preacher, I want the Lord. I want the Lord. I want something to hold on to. If that's you, all you have to simply do is just make up your mind that I'm going to give him my life. When I give him my life, I'll have something I can hold on to. So in that you hear me say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day and for this time. Lord Jesus, I come before you asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Lord Jesus, I believe that in your word that you came and you died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, God raised you for my justification. So now, Lord, I believe and I confess you as my Savior. And I further believe and I further say that right now, according to your word, I am saved. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Glory be to God. Go ahead and give him thanks and give him praise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. Amen. Glory be to God. And at this time, Amen. We're grateful. Amen. That you were able to tune in with us. We'll say we'll see you again on Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. with our prayer. At this time, Missionary Buckner is coming. Amen. To give us our final selection at this time. Let's receive her at this time. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand.